Hello everyone, um, this is Paige and I'm coming to you with a new video which is maybe rather surprising to some of you since I didn't do a video in a long time which I'm really sad about because it's just my own laziness which is uh, to blame for that. <laughs> I'm a lazy bum. But um, I wanted to do a, a video again and it's actually on a thing which I built like years ago. <laughs> no, now it's probably uh, several, no, several few months already. It was I didn't uh, build this not long after the Minecraft update with the slime blocks, with the slime block snapshot. But I never really made a video about it. And yeah, because I kind of had this this block or this this I don't know laziness or something holding me back from making videos, which is ridiculous. But I just didn't make maybe maybe it was the pressure because my my video on that flying machine like it's way more popular <laughs> popular than I think it should be. But I don't know. Mm, but yeah, it's so it's actually a slime block thing, which probably a lot of you like kind of don't. Um, remember slime blocks anymore or like are over with it no more probably a lot of you like stopped messing with that and I'm not even sure if this thing is really innovati innovative but um, yeah what I wanted to show you today is like this thing I'm just gonna like take the finished version and give it a button press um, it's basically a infinitely expandable funny harvesting machine which is totally like not finished enough like it's, I feel like it's not where it should be but um, yeah the thing isn't really the harvesting the, uh, aspect isn't really what's important about what's important about it is the uh, infinitely expandable blade here which is a, uh, it's an infinitely expandable blade which is which is also um, Attached, like attachable to a uh, subcrowd to a flying machine. Um, I, I think it was a subcrowd effort. It might just be. I know that Doc M did the video on it. But this has been a long time. I think it was a subcrowd thing, not just a single solo Doc M thing. But yeah, I had to do some adjustments to it. I had. Well, I, I'm gonna go over to the first uh, design over here. Um, so you will notice that there are uh, two different launchers. This is like, you will probably wonder, wow, what it, even if you, like, especially if you know the original video, you will see, like, that thing is overcomplicated. And if you look over here, you can see how the <laughs> launcher usually looks like. It's pretty simple. You just have the two-way flying machine. You have, like, something to stop. Um, like an obsidian block to stop the whole thing. And then you just pull over the redstone blocks then you update it with the piston and it, it goes flying. Like, that's how easy um, a launcher is. And mm, you may be wondering, yeah, why, why then this overcomplicated thing? Which, like, we can have a quick look at it. Uh, a big difference is that it stops at a piston and that it updates down here. That's the big difference. But you might ask, why is that even necessary? Why don't you? Why do you stop in such a weird way? And why do you like update this and update that and reject that piston and reject that piston? Um, the answer is that I wanted to attach this big thing over here to the that flying machine. Like I invented uh, this design um, like a long time ago. Uh, like when I was trying to, you can pretty much see the age of it by this. this completely stupid slime block elevator which I like which doesn't work by the way really um, yeah I'd like no and I did this right after the slime block update so this uh, thing basically is uh, um, I want I experimented with Mm, four-way flying machines, or I wanted to do one, like an uh, automatic one, no semi-automatic one, and I wanted to like stuff that will expand and move in different directions. Um. Hey! Oh, wrong. Yeah, yeah, I'm a professional. Ooh. 
bad FPS? No, not bad. Oh, I don't know. What the heck? Yeah. But um, you can see that when I move the middle part, the whole thing moves. And it goes in two directions. That's the important thing. It goes in two directions. I wanted to make this four directional. That's like you can all pretty much see all the attempt that it like in this general area and like everywhere but like the slime block limit just makes it so difficult to make it in four directions i didn't manage to to make it four directional but two directional it works really good you can basically move the thing if you move the middle part the attachment point in one direction the whole thing moves with it and you can theoretically i could attach a flying machine to this and it would just pull the whole thing and then i could attach a different flying machine and it will push or like one will push and one will pull that's like kind of a, how I had it in mind, but it didn't really work out, but when I saw a two-directional flying machine from, like, Zipcrowd, I was like, yeah, like, if I can, if I manage to attach my construction here, which is infinitely expandable, to the flying machine, I can at least make a two-way infinitely expandable flying machine. Um, and that's kind of what I did, but the... And that's kind of, yeah, you say, like, just attach it, but then you have the slime block limit, and that's, like, why the whole the whole launch thing is so important. So you will see that if I do like hey let's attach some machine right here, just some slime blocks. Like not a lot of slime blocks, just a few. And then let's start the whole thing. Oh <laughs> um it's not gonna work. Just because the slime block limit is reached. But this thing itself, like actually you would say like one, two, three, four, five, six, that's not slime block limit. But the problem is that when starting up the machine, it has to in the first step it has to move the whole machine. And in all the further steps, it just has to move the this like the partial things. So really it's just the first step that's uh making this difficult. So yeah, I thought maybe if I if I like change change the launcher kind of maybe I can do something and that's exactly what I did. So what this launcher does, um it's kind of complicated, but instead of updating the back piston which would push the whole thing, um it updates the middle piston, which will just push the back this piston back. And then that thing will move independently and that will move independently and everything is going to be alright. But because it's going to push the piston back, you can't have an obsidian block here. So I basically can't stop it with an obsidian block, I have to stop it with a piston. And that's why there's a piston here and no um, yeah, obsidian block. So what you're basically doing now is, you're first moving these blocks back, then you're moving that piston back, or actually you have to do it before, so it, this doesn't update, so you have to move it back, nothing's gonna happen because it's not powered. Then you move the redstone blocks, then in the very end you update this piston, and that's what's gonna happen when I press this button. So, bam, bam, yeah, that, so, yeah. Bam, no, bam, bam, bam. And, yeah, that's why I have all this, this is basically just a bunch of timing stuff, so yeah, like, there's some delay before this piston is gonna get triggered and then this is gonna get triggered pretty early but not before this detracts so I have some timing here and it's pretty optimized also like it has to take a long time before this piston retracts uh, extends again so there's a big delay over here like this is pretty much a pulse lengthener like that and that and that and all of that together will create a launcher which will actually launch the thing even if it has a bunch of stuff attached to it. And that's what I did over here, like it has the those thing attached, but I can launch it anyways. Because okay now we can this will extract first, then this will go there and then it will update. Like look at it and bam bam. Yes. And then after it's gone it will extract again like And yeah in this case it will harvest all the things, which is like probably the worst way of using it. And it will also bounce the things sometimes. Oh, uh, not much in this this case, because neither the cacti nor the sugar cane really was that high. And yeah, to harvest you can like do things like attach blocks here, which will then obviously not get pulled. Um, 
I think you can attach one block per thing, like per unit. So it's not that much blocks. Like in, on the last bit, you can attach a few more blocks because you like have some spare space over here. And yeah, pretty much that. So, but this isn't probably j this probably isn't the um, best use for it. Like one use I was like more excited about uh, is an Enderman farm, uh, which we will obviously find in the end. Like, <laughs> yeah, look at this. Like this is just a prototype proof of concept. But what I did here, I this redstone block triggers an auto launcher. So what basically gonna happen? The flying machine appears. And it will then trigger a uh, um, uh, will trigger the thing. This is a pulse shortener, so it will give a pulse of a certain length. Um, that's what the thing is, and then it's just gonna pull this because it needs the length of a button press. It can't just operate with like a short or very long pulse. And then this repeater is locked because I want it to stay here. I don't want it moving when I go to another dimension because that messes it up. Um, so yeah. If I unlock the repeater, um, things gonna move. And... Uh, the Enderman will get pushed. And what happens when the Enderman will get pushed? Yeah, they, in this case they will get pushed in the void. But you could as well just push them down a really high fall and then... Yeah. This kicked in. Moved it back. And now I think one Enderman will probably, two, will probably get pushed down. And... There we go. And they will die. <laughs> okay, yeah, I made it deep enough that they will die. And then you can collect the Enderbirds. I totally didn't mess around with banners. <laughs> um, yeah, you can collect the enderpearls. And you could probably also do this with XP. I don't know, I think I've seen an enderman take damage in like... Wait, you can, can you take damage in slime blocks? No, I don't remember. I think you can't. You don't take damage in pistons, but don't quote me on that. But yeah, you could build a... Like, if you get away, more enderman will spawn, and if they die fast enough, they're not gonna despawn, though if you are like, I don't know, 32 blocks away, this should probably work. <coughs> this should probably work. Why are there no enderman spawning there? Am I too... Ah, there we go, kinda. Yeah, I think you get the concept. I love that glitch. You can see a portal right there. So yeah. That's about it. I think if you want to know how to build one of these things, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, just like, I don't know, take a screen cap right here and right here. Look at all the timings. Um, also look at DocM's video. I'm gonna link it in the description. How to build one of these things, which is like again, huge shout out because that's like the foundation of, uh, foundation of the whole build. It's like I built that thing, and then I saw the two way flying machine and was like, hey, I can totally use that. Um, so, yeah, ooh, that was glitchy. Um, so, that was pretty much it. Maybe you can come up with a uh, like cool use for this yourself. Maybe you're like. Hey, I can do that to move this and that. I can use that to move this and that around and it's totally useful for me and totally awesome and please, please if that happens, you can just leave a comment or send me your video and it will make me happy, but I think that was enough chatting, chit-chattering um, for, for one video, so this was a pretty talk talky video anyway, so <laughs> Maybe I'm not even gonna upload it. Yeah, I probably will. Um, so yeah, see you later. Have a good day.